Uh, good day. My uh, name is Sebastian Megabuerther, and today we will be talking about principles of fracture management. First of all, the definition of a fracture. A fracture is a break in the continuity of the bone. In other words, here we've got a fibula and if I apply a force that is a break and that you can clearly see is a break in the continuity of the bone. So classifications, fractures can be classified as simple or complex fractures. It can be a closed fracture or an open fracture. Open fractures, what we refer commonly as compound fractures, in other words, there is a wound over the fracture site. What are complex fractures? These are fractures that pertain to your acetabulum, to the pelvis, which can be open book, closed book fractures, or spinal fractures. Compound fractures are further classified according to the size of the wound over the fracture site. Type 1 fracture is where the wound is less than 1 cm in size. Type 2 is where the wound is 1 to 10 cm in size. And type 3 open wound fractures is where the wound is more than 10 cm or you can see bone exposed, no matter how big that wound is, or there is a vascular injury. When we talk about fractures, we would like to know what is a displaced fracture. For that, I've got a little mnemonic. It's called LARA. L-A-R-A. -A. L stands for length. A stands for angulation, R stands for rotation, and A stands for apposition. Let me demonstrate. There is the fracture. The length in this situation is normal. If the fracture is displaced, you will have that sort of situation. There is shortening. Shortening pertain to the length of the fracture site. So shortening, angulation, that is angulation. Rotation, again, if I align the fraction, fracture properly, that sort of situation, that sort of situation is rotation. And apposition means how the bone is opposed to one another. Let's just get this fracture right. That is 100% opposed, 50% opposed, unopposed. That is apposition. So displacement pertain to the mnemonic LARA. Then there are also fracture patterns. First of all, we have a transverse fracture. This is a proper, proper transverse fracture. You can see a transverse line. We have short oblique. We have spiral fractures. Comminuted fractures. A comminuted fracture means there's more than two fragments at the fracture site. Segmental fractures. Avulsion fractures. Pathological fractures. And of course, stress fractures. All this will be demonstrated. So, how do you treat a patient with a fracture? First of all, we would like to exclude life-threatening injuries. And this is according to the Advanced Trauma Life Support. Always, always assess the neurovascular status. And then, of course, you're going to have an x-ray taken. Now, this is most important. Remember the rule of twos. We should have two views. That is 
anteroposterior view and a lateral view, you should have two joints, which is the joint above the fracture line and the joint below the fracture line. You must always have two sides. That is, if you are not sure whether there's a fracture, especially in children who is having growth plates, sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that the growth plate is a fracture, so having two sides. And again, if you are not really sure, take x-rays on two different occasions. Once you have done all this, you can make a diagnosis of, for instance, this is a simple close fracture. How do we treat that? First of all, you should give the patient any form of analgesia. And we call it adequate analgesia. Then you should splint or immobilize the fracture. This aids in the analgesic effect. Always elevate the fracture because often there's swelling. And then, of course, if it's a simple close fracture, you can then do the definitive care, which is applying a circular cast, which should then immobilize the joint above the fracture and the joint below the fracture. This is what is challenging. When do you refer a patient for specialized care? Immediate referral? Yes, you will attempt a reduction, and if the reduction fails, please refer the patient. If you manage to accomplish the reduction, but you cannot maintain the reduction, please refer the patient. And after your reduction, you should assess again the neurovascular status, and if there is a, compli a complication, due to the vascular, due to your reduction, in terms of vascular or neurological compromise, please refer the patient. All complex fractures should be referred. Those are your pelvic fractures, your acetabular fractures, and of course, spinal fractures. Severely displaced fractures should be referred. All open fractures whether it's type 1 or type 3. All open fractures should be referred and all fractures involving a joint. And of course, all fractures involving vascular or neurological structures. Later referrals. This is after you have successfully reduced and treated a fracture. If a fracture has delayed union, or a non-union, or a malunion, those should also be referred. So here we have an x-ray of a hand which shows a fracture of the second and third metacarpal. If we apply the principles of Lara, what do you think about the displacement? And I'll tell you, I think the displacement, there's very minimal displacement. But would you accept this, yes or no? If you just respect the rule of two, you would have requested a lateral view. And so here is a lateral view. What do you think now about the displacement? This is a very, very severely displaced uh, fracture. And this is a patient you will refer. Again, if we look at the x-ray, um, you'll see there's a fracture of the distal radius. Is this displaced or not displaced? Well, I tell you, that is not displaced. But again, if you respect the rule of two, you'll see on the lateral view, there is a very, very displaced fracture. This is a patient that you should refer. When we look at 
this x-ray, we see a fracture of the radius mid shaft. Again, is it displaced or non? You will agree with me that that is not displaced. But again, if you respect the rule of twos, there is an AP view, anteroposterior view, and there you'll see a displacement. As a matter of fact, this is actually quite a serious injury. It's actually called a Galeazzi, but don't worry about that. This is a fracture of necessity, and this patient needs surgery. Here we've got adequate views of a fracture of the ulna. We've got a lateral view and a anteroposterior view. But why do you think I'm unhappy with this? There are three things here that makes me unhappy. Can you think about it? Yes, you've got it. One, you need the joint below and the joint above. You remember the rule of twos. And then, incidentally, this patient is having bangles on and a ring. Please do not send patients for an x-ray if you suspect a fracture and they've got these um, uh, jewelry on. Cut it off. Um, this can cause complications later on. Here we've got an x-ray of a elbow. Adequate views, yes, it is AP and a lateral. It shows the joint above and the joint below. In other words, the rule of two has been respected here. But can you see anything here? If you look properly at the elbow, you will see a fat paired sign. This is this dark shadow around the elbow. If you see that, you should suspect a injury or a fracture. So what we do is, if I draw a line down the anterior cortex of the humerus, as shown there by this arrow, that line will miss the capitellum. That actually means that the capitellum is totally displaced posteriorly. What should happen, that line should bisect the capital, capitellum in the anterior two-thirds. So yes, there is a fracture. Let's go back to the anterior view, anterior posterior view, and there you can now appreciate a fracture line, which you would not have appreciated. This is just another view of the fat pad sign. Again, there's a fat pad sign. Look at my arrow. And let's just draw the anterior cortical line all the way down, down. And you see we actually miss the capitellum, which actually means that this fracture has been displaced posteriorly. Again, there's another elbow fracture. By now, you will be able to pick up the fat pad sign. Yes, you do. Your anterior cortical line. It misses the capitellum. Yeah, let's go back now to the anterior view. And there you can just about see a fracture line. You remember part of the fracture patterns was segmental fractures and comminuted fracture. So here is a fracture of the humerus. Again, the rule of two has been respected. We see the joint above, the joint below. Can you describe these fractures? All right. The, this is a segmental fracture because you see a fracture line on the top there and very distally there's another fracture. That is a segmental fracture. But let's look at the proximal fracture. We see more than two fragments, so that is comminuted. And let's go to the distal fracture. Again, more than two fragments, and that's a comminuted fracture. So on this 
x-ray, we appreciate a segmental fracture where both fracture sites are comminuted. This is a x-ray with the fracture of the proximal humerus. What do you say about displacement? Again, you can use LARA and length. Yes, there's not much shortening. Apposition, good apposition. Angulation, yes, minimal angulation. Rotation, aha. Rotation you cannot appreciate on a X-ray. Rotation you can only appreciate or evaluate clinically, not on an X-ray. So, will you refer this patient? Yes or no? Well, I would say, according to the principles, refer this patient because the fracture is very close to the joint. But, on the other hand, these fractures heal very, very well and it can easily be treated in a primary facility. So, we're moving down to the lower limb now. Remember one of the fractures, fracture patterns that we discussed? It's called an avulsion fracture. There we can just about see a little avulsion of the fifth metatarsal head. And what does that mean is on the fifth metatarsal head attaches the peroneus brevis and with any sort of supination type of injury, the peroneus brevis tendon jerks on the fifth metatarsal head and pulls a piece of bone away. So that's called a avulsion fracture. This is an x-ray with a fracture of the ankle. We can see both malleoli are fractured. Will you refer this patient? Yes. Why? Because it involves a joint. You remember, one of the referral strategies were if the patient have a fracture involving a joint. This is a fracture of, uh, actually of a fracture of a distal tibia. Can you describe that fracture? Well, you see more than two, three pieces. So this is a very comminuted fracture of the distal tibia and it involves the joint. Will you refer this patient? Yes, you will refer this patient after your initial treatment, that is analgesia, splinting, elevation. This is an x-ray of a knee. What do we see there? I think we all appreciate a transverse fracture of the patella. Will you refer this patient? Yes or no? According to our principles, yes, we will refer this patient. Why? It involves a joint. Here we have an x-ray of a femur showing a fracture of the distal femur. Can you describe the pattern? Yes, I will agree with you all. This is comminuted, but not just comminuted, it extends right into the joint line. Will you refer this patient? I'm sure by now you'll say yes. Why? Because it involves a joint. This is a fracture of a neck of femur. This is a very, very common fracture, especially in our aging population. This is a fracture that most of you will encounter at some stage. Yes, most of us will agree that because it involves the joint, this patient should be referred. 
What is very, very ironical is that a lot of the primary physicians would actually tell the patient that this patient will need a total hip replacement, which of course is not wrong. And this is what we have done for this patient, a total hip replacement. But this is also amenable to fractures. And so there we see a new fracture now, which is called a periprostatic fracture. Were you referred? Yes, you should. What about the complications of fractures? As we uh, stated much earlier, we have delayed unions. This is time-related. This may go on to non-union. And then, of course, we have malunion. So here we've got an x-ray of a established non-union. Thank you. Um, this concludes our session. If, there's, if there are any comments or questions, um, these are my details. Please feel free to call or to email and I will respond to all your questions or comments. Thank you.